Let's get right to our floor show traders, Keith Fitzgerald and Sarge Guilfoyle. Sarge, Mester also said that she's been talking to firms who are still struggling to find workers. If she's talking about her region, I mean, you know I lived in Cleveland. Cleveland's home to Sherwin-Williams, Parker Hannafin, KeyBank, PNC, all publicly traded companies. How are you as a trader and investor balancing the tech layoffs that we just pointed out with the help wanted signs still proliferating throughout much of America? Well, I think when you look at the labor market, it's one of the last pieces of the economy to react to either recessionary or pre-recessionary uh, data points. Uh, the last thing we need is for the Fed to overreact right now. Well, I think we need a not too hot, not too cold labor report. Uh, it is my belief that either an especially strong report or a weaker report would provoke either fear or an overreaction. So what I'm doing to combat this is I've, I'm, imp I'm investing where I see a cross section between value and quality. So that's names like Disney, Nike, Amazon, along those three names. Uh, and as far as my shorter term book to get to survive this current market volatility, which is in our favor right now, I, I bought growth. I'm buying growth because growth is scarce. So I'm buying names like, like AMD. It's my largest holding, like NVIDIA, like Marvel Technology, like yeah. KLA, which is a, a semiconductor equipment firm. Uh, I'm staying long to Staples because that's my stability. That's where my, that's where my dividend payments come from. And I'm staying long to defense contractors because I, I see their customer base as quite inelastic going forward for the next five, 10 years, maybe longer. Keith, uh, let's let's get your opinion ahead of the all important jobs report tomorrow. And again, we want to flag everybody. You've got to be here tomorrow in the final hour of trade because the reaction could be awfully interesting here, depending on what the number is. So uh, Loretta Mester, the, the Cleveland Fed president, uh, is in essence saying some pretty interesting stuff. She says, OK, uh, we've, we're seeing signs policies are working on the demand side, not yet inflation jobs. She still sees a lot of help wanted signs out there. I, I just think that it's, it's interesting. First of all, she's speaking of the Economic Club of Pittsburgh. Does she not know that the Pittsburgh Steelers are the Browns' biggest rival? I mean, my goodness. But <laughs> <laughs> that said, you know, Sarge is looking at Staples. What do you see as a staple stock you want right now? I am with the Sarge on many of the points he made. I'm looking for dependability and growth in margin protection right now, especially ahead of the jobs report, because we're in this weird space where bad is good. So if the number is extreme on either side, yeah. people are going to counterintuitively that run the other direction. So they could go gas on, gas off in an instant. I don't want to play that game. I want to stick with Lockheed Martin, which is having a great day. I want to stick with AMD. I want to stick with companies who make products the world cannot live without, because I think the numbers are going to stink tomorrow, and I don't want to play that game. I want to be with numbers that are going to be good, and that's got to be the companies and the CEOs. And your fave has always been for, for quite some time. Apple, it's up 21 percent month to Absolutely. date, or quarter to date, rather. It's around 165 and change. Are, are you adding right now? Or are you waiting for a different price here? No, as a matter of fact, I'm buying consistently. I hope I'm smart enough to buy more. I think that <laughs> stock is going to be back in the 180 range before people realize it. If there's any kind of stability whatsoever, even a survival instinct, that's a stock that's not going away. People are giving up lots of stuff. Walmart's changing their consumer mix, their product mix, but nobody's giving up their iPhones. Sarge, Bank of England just <laughs> yeah. Bank of England just implemented its biggest rate hike in what, something like 27 years? It was an eight to one vote. Uh, we know that there, of course, is, is not an August meeting for the Federal Reserve, but come September, what do you really believe is going to happen versus what you hope is going to happen with the uh, rates? Well, I, I hope they'll pivot somewhat at Jackson Hole this month. I think they're going to have to be a little more nuanced in their approach going forward. They've been aggressive so far. We know it takes nine months, maybe longer, for what they've done already to hit the Main Street economy. Main Street has not felt this monetary tightening yet. I, going into September, quantitative tightening is going to ratchet up. I think it's going to double. Let quantitative tightening do the work. Take baby steps. If you have to raise interest rates, raise them a quarter a point at a time. You don't need to be any more aggressive. Let's see how your aggression plays out going forward, because I have a feeling Mr. and Mrs. America are going to get hurt. Housing stocks, this, this plays into interest rates. I find it really interesting that the 30-year fixed fell below 5%. I mean, this is the average here that, that sometimes we get from bank rate, 4.99%. We've got the 30-year Treasury yield at 2.96%. But as we, as we begin to really watch these mortgage rates, the housing markets, uh, people keep saying, oh, my God, it's going to freeze. We had a report yesterday. 
about the housing market and how mortgage brokers are twiddling their thumbs. They're like the Maytag repairman with not much to do. <laughs> uh, Keith, do you see any opportunity in housing stocks? No, I don't right now because, to the Sarge's point, you know, Mr. and Mrs. America are going to get hurt here. This is the absolutely right spirit of the move, but the wrong intention. It's going to be the law of unintended consequences. So I'm not keen to touch those stocks. I'd rather be in the lows. I'd rather be in the Home Depot. I don't own either of those stocks at the moment. But if I'm going to run into the housing, that's where I'm going to be because I think people are going to make what they have better. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I'll tell you, the, the Dow is slightly looking better. It had been down 159 points earlier. We are down 69 at the moment here. The home builders moving up into the green for this session. And again, watch this S&P. Now it's flat. So coming into the top of the hour, you guys, we were crossing the unchanged line 98 times. I bet you we had another four or five times to that. We'll, we'll check it in just a few <laughs> minutes. Keith Sarge, great to have you both. Thank you so much. Crypto. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.